I'm here with Yoav Bali, who is the Vice President of Product Management and Engineering for Sweet Analytics, and once again, Mark Holliday, who was here before. He's our Senior Product Marketing Manager. Welcome, guys. Good Great to see you here, Fritz. Us. Good to have you. Um, I want to start out this conversation about analytics, talking about data-driven cultures, because it's something we hear people say all the time. We have a data-driven culture, but uh, what are the criteria that actually makes an organization so? Hmm. I'll take this one. Um, for me to talk about a data-driven culture, I, I'll just say a little bit about what analytics is for me. And, and analytics is really a process that um, starts with a certain type of event, in our case a business event. You analyze this event, you debate on what are the next best steps to take, you do a decision on what to do next to improve a certain business situation, you implement that decision, you monitor it, you see, hey, the decision we, we've taken, did it actually improve our situation? And you do that by creating then a new business event, and this is how the loop starts again. So for me, a data-driven culture is to really commit to this loop and to apply data to all of these steps uh, along the process. Um, a great example, not from the business world, which we might can relate to, is a quarterback in football, right? Before the snap, the quarterback analyzes the defense. That's the business event for him. The ball gets snapped. He analyzes what's happening. He takes a decision where to throw the ball. And then, you know, he sees what happens. Once the defense is on the field and he's off, what is the quarterback doing? He sits on the sideline and he looks at the tablet and he revisits the decisions and the analysis that he has done. So next time he's on the field, he can hopefully take a better decision. That's for me a great example for an analytical loop and a commitment to data-driven uh, data culture. And this is something, when I look at businesses, if they really commit to apply data to all these steps along the business, that's for me a data-driven. Okay, all right. Maybe some other time we'll talk about gut-driven cultures, <laughs> the opposite side of exactly. it. Exactly. Mark, uh, we talked a lot about NetSuite Analytics Warehouse here at the show, but yes. we haven't talked about it here at NetSuite TV. Tell us what it is. So NetSuite's Analytical Warehouse is a new product built specifically for NetSuite customers that is both a data warehouse solution and an analytics uh, platform built on Oracle's autonomous data warehouse and their uh, Oracle's analytical cloud. It's a complementary solution to Suite Analytics because it extends the ability to bring other data sources into the warehouse to do further analysis company-wide, not just on your NetSuite data. And I think we can sort of suss out what the benefits are, but maybe expand on the benefits for our customers. What kind of superpowers does this bring? I'm going to go with two superpowers. I'm going to go with uh, the flash, because <laughs> the speed, okay. and I'm going to go with Superman for the x-ray vision, because we give them both speed and insights into their data like they've never seen before. So the first thing is, is we've pre-built all this for them. We've done all the heavy lifting. Building a data warehouse yourself is very expensive with the resources that you need. It takes a very long time to get to where we get immediately with the warehouse solution. So we've pre-built that and we're going to maintain those data pipelines to make it very easy for NetSuite customers to bring all their NetSuite data into the warehouse. The second thing is the external data connections. We've already provided 25 pre-built connections to popular platforms like Salesforce or Google Analytics to bring that in to add to their analysis. And you get all of this from one single vendor. In comparison to other solutions, you have to manage all, their member, uh, all, all these different vendors. We do this all for the NetSuite customers and to add even more value to the solution, non-NetSuite users can now access NetSuite data. So the CEOs, the CIOs who are not in the transactional system every day can now go into the warehouse and do their own analysis, including NetSuite data. Okay, that sounds like something people should get right away. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of power packed into that. Yoav, just can you draw a distinction for us between NetSuite Analytics Warehouse and Suite Analytics? Sure. So Suite Analytics is our embedded solution within the overall NetSuite suite. Um, we provide real-time analytics out of the box to our customers through capabilities like reports, safe searches, and, and our newest and most exciting ones, data sets and, and workbooks. 
Um, but as, as Mark said, there are certain capabilities um, we just can't do, like for example, historical analytics, right? Our system is, is always real time. The transactions get updated in real time. If you would like to get data snapshots and analyze these snapshots over time, that's something where the analytics warehouse is, is a great solution for. If you would like to bring in third party data sources from, from you know, non-NetSuite uh, uh, applications, for example, that's something where the analytics warehouse will, will help you. So um, the analytics warehouse is, is perfect to extend the NetSuite capabilities if you need more analytics, especially in these two areas that, that I just mentioned. Okay, that was very helpful. Um, Mark, can you walk us through a quick example of how NetSuite Analytics Warehouse works? Absolutely, so as Kevin uh, said in his keynote yesterday, during the pandemic, a lot of uh, companies had to go direct to consumer. So that put a lot of investment into websites, and websites uh, create a lot of data. And being able to bring that data into the warehouse along with your sales data from NetSuite, combining those two data, you can now get a richer analysis on comparing your website traffic to your sales and also get a better measurement of your digital advertising ROI when you bring in that data from something like Google Analytics to map it across to uh, the sales numbers. And then using the AI machine learning capabilities, you can start to train the, uh, the warehouse to look for anomalies and patterns in that website data, because website data is, is, is pretty rich, it's pretty dense, it's kind of cryptic sometimes too. So we take all that complexity out of it for our customers and being able to bring those two things together so they can answer questions about why digital advertising is either performing very well or not performing well enough. Great, uh, that's very powerful. And Yoav, we've made some uh, announcements this week around Sweet Analytics, but for those who haven't uh, caught them yet, do you want to reveal what those are? Oh, absolutely. Uh, with with 21.2, we, we have three very exciting features that, that we are releasing. Um, the first one was the highest requested features by our customers for a while, uh, which was the capability to export um, workbook pivots to CSV files. So with 21.2, they're, they're getting that and I I was hosting a product round table earlier today. I got standing ovations, <laughs> claps, and I saw some tears in some customers' <laughs> eyes. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, the, the, the second capability is also something um, our customers will appreciate. We call it a data set cache. Um, it actually speeds up the overall query performance, um, which, is, which is something we, we, we are very happy. Um, I'll go, don't go into all the technolo technological mambo jumbo, um, but we're doing a great job there. We, we apply some, some um, cutting edge uh, stuff there and, and customers will definitely feel the improvement there. Um, and the third one, uh, data set linking. Um, this is also something Ryan mentioned on stage today during the keynote. Um, an amazing feature, absolutely amazing. The capability that customers have now is to join data sets that were previously unjoinable. Classical example, you want to compare your budget versus your actual. Um, you can now do that easily through an easy UI. We apply intelligence. We recommend you which fields to use to link from, from the two data sets. And um, the amount of insights that we are unlocking with, with this capability is, is, is just great. Ah, okay, that sounds very powerful too. A lot of great uh, analytics capabilities in both products. One other thing I want to touch on real quick, Mark, we also talked about the 360 dashboards, kind of a different side of the view of data. Can you just quickly explain what that is? Yeah, the 360 dashboards do uh, a lot of things for the uh, user experience and the ability to take action and be more productive. It brings everything into one view, because if you think about uh, customers or even projects, uh, project managers manage a lot of different things. They manage cash, schedule, people, uh, clients, all that lives in different parts of the system. So with these 360 degree dashboards, we bring that all into a nice UI so they can start from a view of their portfolio, looking at which ones are performing well, which ones are at risk, drill right through all the way down into very low level detail like time entry lines to see if something was overcharged, giving that project manager complete visibility and control to take action and keep the projects running on time and on budget. 
That's fantastic, and I love the ability to you know kind of take action as well from from that spot. So, um, well, that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you both for joining us and filling us in on what's going on. It's very exciting. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us.